Hello, I'm Sally Blumis-Dunn, and this is Poetry Break. I teach modern poetry at Manhattanville College in SUNY Purchase, and when GCTV approached me with the idea of a poetry show, I was very enthusiastic, even more enthusiastic when I was able to have as our first guest, Eamon Grennan. Thrilled to have you here, Eamon. Eamon um, has taught at Vassar College for many years. You were a full professor there? Right. Right. Um, recently retired, but still teaching at NYU in Columbia. That's it. Was born in Dublin and has a little college a cottage on the west coast of Ireland where he spends his summers. So you're all around the world. And his, I think, second to last book, um, Still Life with Water, won the Lenore Marshall Prize, which and his latest book, Matter of Fact, I just had the utter pleasure of reading. It's just out from Grey Wolf Press, so you can get it. I strongly recommend it. Um, and we're very pleased to have you, Eamon. Thank you, Sally. Nice introduction. Okay. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> okay. okay, so I was hoping that you would read the first book in your poem, Start of March, Connemara in your book, Good. Matter of Fact. Okay, and Connemara is that west part of Ireland that we were talking about. I'm bi-coastal in some sense. I'm in the northeast here, and I'm in the far uh, northwest in, in Ireland, and I shuttle between. It's in memory of Elizabeth Bishop, because I steal a few lines from Bishop, and she's written a poem called uh, The End of March, and uh, it, it occurs, it, it takes place in Maine. Start of March, Connemara, in memory of Elizabeth Bishop, the wind colder even than March and Maine, though the same sea is your greens of mutton fat jade and bleached artichoke. The water thumbed, wind scumbled, its heroic white manes blown to bits at the shoreline. Two white gulls, wing tilted, are surfing the sou'wester. How do they do it, finding the right angle in the gale and angels of the shiver blast, adapting to it, letting it take them the way they're going? A lone cormorant blackly flashes, heading west like a messenger, breasting the choppy wave peaks. He's all purpose and intensity, plunging headlong into his own unknown future, reaching out to it without a thought, while I go back the way I came, along wet sand that's glistening with relief, my own prints erased already, writ in water. Rock and water have to be our elements here, and today's buffeting air which these rain plovers pay no mind to. A little tribe rising as one, spinning into the wind, whistling their shrill excitement in flight. Glitter wings, making their mark against green gape water, then gone. Mm. I love that poem, both for its subject matter and its sound. And I love the way you, you seem to make up your own compound words. Mm -hmm. Shiver blast, glitter wing, and just the sounds in the poem, water thumbed, wind scumbled, scumbled, I just love. And your poems offer so much pleasure to the ear. Mm -hmm. And I guess I wanted you to speak a little bit about that, about where and when, when you started writing poetry, when you think that ear mm -hmm. kind of fell in love with language the way it seems to have in some yeah. way. I think that's a good phrase. I mean, you do fall in love with language, and what you fall in love with is the physical of language and, and its, its acoustic properties and its sonic possibilities, you know? Um, for me, probably part of that, just at a fairly technical level, might have been reading, when I was a kid, um, um, Irish poetry in Irish, which has a big uh, acoustic quality of assonantal play. So uh, that might have filtered in as a kind of cultural, uh, as, a, as a sort of cultural atmosphere, you know, which I, which I then try. But always, I, I, I think poetry is concentrated on the language itself. I think that's what people uh, find in some ways. I mean, it says things, but it says things. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the saying, the use of the language, the active of the language, the ac activity of the language seems to me terribly important. So you play with it. It's, it's a kind of pleasure of play. It's a pleasure of making things up. But all the time you're trying to say, language is our way to make the world realizable. You know, we, we language the world. And so uh, poetry is the attempt to kind of find equivalence of language for the utterly unsayable, which is the world itself. The world mm -hmm. is there, and then language is there, and they exist in this kind of parallel 
poetry is the attempt to crisscross, to cross hatch, to mm -hmm. To sort of wrap words around experience, which is always fleeting by. Yeah, absolutely. And to register in language a kind of parallel world, a parallel uh, um, being in, in some way. So in a, poem, in a poem like this, does it start, I know it's a call to a bishop poem, but does it start with the sound? Does it start with sound or does it start with an image for you? Yeah. I think I think both. You know, I don't think these things are utterly uh, uh, um, separable sure. in the end. I, I think you're 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 you live in the midst of fact. You live in the midst of the real world going on, and you live as a pair of ears. I, I think poetry is about its own sound, and you're always trying to listen on the one hand to the world, and on the other to the language and its possibility. And so it's the attempt to stereophonically bring these together that makes for the poem. You know? Yeah. I was just rereading your poems yesterday and I was reminded when I was very young I was given some Dylan Thomas poems. Right. There's my and I think I was about 10 or 11. I had no idea what was going on in the poem. But I fell in love with the language. And your poems, although I do understand them I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank, um, God. thank God. Thank right. God. Um, can be appreciated just for the sheer sound of them. Mm -hmm. And that's not something that can be said for many poets writing today. I don't I, in my experience, I just think... I, th I think, I think uh, the poetry I love always has an element of that going on in it. You know, yeah, you have a kind of uh, a current running through that's a sort of acoustic current. And I think possibly there's an element of song uh, behind poetry anyway, and I'm not, you know, I'm not into lyric singing. And I won't <laughs> sing all this very minute. Uh, but I, I, it's too early in the morning, for one thing, right? Um, but it seems to me we uh, play with language in a kind of lyric, when you're writing lyric poems at least, with a, sen with a, with a sense that behind it is song mm -hmm. in some way. And, and you're always, I mean, there are much more song like. Uh, uh, poets uh, uh, than, than me, Heaney and Muldoon, for example, in the Irish context. Um, but it is a question of finding something in the language that registers as, I am attending to language too. Mm -hmm. I'm not just trying to say uh, something, I'm trying to say something. Absolutely. That kind of doubleness. You know? Absolutely. So moving from a poem which to me is so much about sound to something like the breakfast